Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Come on, we can do better than that. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, the Bible says with two or three are gathered in his name, so is he. Hallelujah. We come to give God praise this morning. God, we thank you for allowing us to be able to come together where you've granted us the opportunity to be able to gather together and give your name some praise, God. We thank you for keeping us throughout the week. God, we thank you for just keeping a hedge of protection over us. And we just thank you for being God. I said we just thank you for being God. Hallelujah, God, and we come to sing praises to your name. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Come on, if you want to stand with us, do so. If you're online, you want to dance where you are, do that. Come on, let's put your hands together. Thank you. 
Come on, put your hands together, y'all. Come on, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, for the rest of my days. Yes. Yes, Lord, for the rest of my days. Hey, oh, we're singing, yes. yes. Come on, let your voices sing, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, for the rest of my days. Hey, hey. Yes. Yes, Lord. Rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, y'all. Come on, church. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. This is the day that God has made for us to come to his service and worship him. So give him a hand, praise. Because God is good all the time. All the time. Father God, we thank you for this day we've never seen before. We ask you to fill this service. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Stir your spirit in this place, Lord. Bless those who want to come here, but bless those, Lord, who are not able to make it. We ask you, Lord, to bless those on the internet who is watching. Continue to be with us, sustain us. Touch the ministries, the deacons. Touch the speaker of the Alba, Dr. Wainwright, where he would bring a mighty word for us so we can feed on, so we can nourish on, Lord. And we thank you take, for taking this gospel to a dying world, Lord. And we just give you thanks. Let all the redeemer of Christ say amen, amen, amen and amen. 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 of the Lord one more time. Amen. 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 And amen. Yes. Yes. We ask if you will find your Bible as we will extend the reading of scripture this morning found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 and verses 3 and 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. In a day like this, when the world is in such turmoil, there is no better place to find peace and comfort than in the Word of God. Amen. The scripture reads, and I'm reading from the New King James. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you, which also you receive and in which you stand. For I delivered to you first of all that which also I, re I received also, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again yes. the third day according to the scriptures. The truth of God for the people of God Amen. be blessed this morning. Amen. Amen. You may be seated Amen. in the presence of the Lord. Thank you. 
Understanding. Trust in the Lord always, always trust in Him. Hallelujah. We are so glad that you are able to join us this morning. My goodness, we're already into April of 2024. But God is a good God. Amen. Is He good? All the time? All the time. God is good. We haven't said that in a while now, have we? Amen. We get into habits in church. We need to keep up the truth of God's word every day. Amen. So we would like to welcome all of you this morning, uh, those who are joining us on social media. We welcome you as well. If you're joining us for the first time in the chat, just uh, acknowledge that you're joining us for the first time as a guest, and we would like to reach out to you. But as well in the sanctuary, do we have any guests who are here with us for the first time? Just wave your hand. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. So good to see you this morning. We welcome you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray this won't be the last time you join us. Amen. Amen. Once you come in, we'll let you go to the refrigerator next time. Amen. Amen. It's all good. Just a couple things to share with you, and I'm going to get out of the way. Um, how successful and blessed we were yesterday by the pick and pack. Amen. The women's ministry put together a giveaway program of items and clothing and uh, I saw jewelry in there. I didn't look closely enough to see if there were any diamonds, but amen, amen. But what a blessing. I know there were quite a few people from the community uh, that came through and were able to partake of that event. And if you did not realize, all those items were given away. Amen. This was a uh, not a garage sale. You weren't expected to exchange anything except the love of God. And we were able to do that. So, Sister Saunders, God bless you, Reverend Saunders, for the wonderful gathering and the women's ministry for putting that together. Uh, I, I know there were several items in my home that sort of disappeared from the front door, and I am praising God for that every day. Amen. <laughs> so God bless you, and thank you again. We were also blessed on this past Wednesday as Reverend Busk uh, con continued with our Bible study on Ephesians chapter 6, God's armor. Amen. Were you blessed? Were you blessed? I hope you'll join us again next week as she continues in that Bible study. And uh, what is more important to know that we need to be equipped to be prepared to fight against the wiles of the enemy. Amen. And I'm excited also, and you're going to hear more of it in the announcements, that on next Saturday, amen, we are going to get together again. There is a social security expert 
who's going to be coming to share his information with us about how to deal with issues relating to Social Security. And in addition to that, one of the county uh, advisors uh, who has worked with uh, Dr. Brown, uh, she was able to get an interview with her and she's gonna talk about election issues for this upcoming 2024 election. You don't wanna miss out on that opportunity. You can't think of more important issues than what we say, used to say in the Navy, deal with the wolf that's the closest to the tent. All right, yeah, we've got to deal with money issues with Social Security. We've got to deal with what's coming up when the election. There are wolves out there, amen, but we got to be prepared and again, equipped to deal with what the enemy is putting out in our steps, in our way. So again, I'm going to get out of the way. We welcome you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And here we have a special welcome to everyone who's joining us. And that we sing a song is called, This is the Lord's House. Amen. We greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. personal experience.
desires revealed in me. Come on, I can give myself away. your mind, but it's all right to be out of your mind for Christ Jesus, amen, to give yourself away to him so he can use you, amen. amen. Thank you, choir, amen. Come on, you can do better than that. That song is a powerful song of self-reflection where you are with the Lord. I'm going to take a moment to introduce our distinguished speaker for the morning, this man of God. Reverend Dr. Mark Wainwright, a native of Baltimore, Maryland, right in our own backyard. Amen. Amen. The youngest of three sons born to Deacon Ralph uh, Wainwright and Deaconess Ernestine Wainwright. He began his Christian walk with the Lord at the age of nine, mm -hmm. and it transformed his life and led him to accept the call to preach. He was licensed in November of 1989 and ordained in July of 2001 at the Concord Baptist Church in Baltimore led by Dr. Matthew L. Jones. Dr. Wainwright is the 10th senior pastor at the Annapolis Historic First Baptist Church. He leads his congregation in the state capitol as they work to build a multi-generational community. He served as the pastor of the Good Tidings Baptist Church in Baltimore. He led that congregation as it served the Bel Air Edison neighborhood in East Baltimore. He's committed to Christ as well as the Holy Spirit's ministry and movement, preaching the gospel, emancipation, and serving as an anchor in the community are all the hallmarks of his ministry. I do want to share this because the, his ministry background is quite diverse. He served as a youth pastor of the New Hope Baptist Church in Dallas, Texas, led by Reverend Derek Harkins. He worked as a youth and young adult pastor at the Douglas Memorial Community Church in Baltimore, where he was led by Reverend Dr. Ralph, Raphael Warnock. At Douglas is where he learned to develop and implement social action and justice ministry in an urban community. He worked as the assistant pastor of the Macedonia Baptist Church in Baltimore under the late Reverend Dr. Marvis May, Sr. At Macedonia, 
It shaped his understanding of pastoral ministry, community engagement, and development. He was also the assistant director of ministers in training, the program at the Empowerment Temple AME Church, led by Reverend Dr. Jamal Bryant. At Empowerment Temple, he learned about 21st century ministry, how to build and train ministry leaders, and how to engage in ministry with a worldwide perspective. Amen. He's a graduate of Morgan State University. His BA, his Bachelor of Arts is in Religious Studies and a minor in English. He also has Master of Divinity from Virginia Union University's Samuel DeWitt Proctor School of Theology right in Richmond. He is a Credit West Preaching Scholar at the Payne Theological Seminary in Wilberforce, Ohio, right, where, he learned his, where he earned his Doctor of Ministry in Transformational Preaching. He is a National Life member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity. He enjoys serving others and positively impacting their lives. He honestly does everything he can to improve the lives of individuals he meets so that they can be transformed in turn and help others. Dr. Rain White, excuse me, Dr. Reverend Dr. Wayne Wright is the loving husband of Lady Erica, uh, and she is in Baltimore. Uh, it, we regret she couldn't join us this morning, uh, Reverend Doctor. Amen. But uh, they are the proud parents of three wonderful children, Eden, Blake, and Sophia. So, resurrection, let's extend a round of applause, a prayer in, from your heart, and a welcome to Reverend Dr. Wayne Wright. Amen. Yeah. Come on, give him a round of applause. Yeah. We are truly blessed and excited to have such a distinguished guest this morning. So after the song of preparation by our choir, Reverend Dr. Wainwright. Amen. Come on, y'all, put your hands together. Thank you. 
whatever you need in my be. Come on, y'all, put your hands together. Hey. Come on, Sopranos, you ready? My everything. Everything. I don't know about you, but I'm so grateful to God that God is my everything. Matter of fact, my brother said, go old school. Just say God is. You insert whatever the Lord is to you. A way maker, a battle axe, a bridge over troubled water, a healer, a deliverer, a financial counselor, a, a whole everything. God is my everything. We bless God for this opportunity to be in this house of worship on this day. We thank and praise God for all that the Lord has done, all that the Lord is doing, and how God is continually moving and blessing as only God can. To God, my heavenly Father, to Jesus the Christ, my Savior and Lord, the Holy Ghost who is our comforter, guide, and power. We thank him for this opportunity to be in the house of the Lord. Uh, to our interim pastor, Reverend Maxwell, Reverend Dr. Maxwell, we thank God for him. Uh, all of the Reverend clergy that are here, uh, those whom I've met and those whom I have not met as of yet. It's a blessing to be in this house on this day. To the officials of this church, deacons and trustees, uh, to all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ and in creation. It's a blessing to be in resurrection on this day. Amen. Uh, let me say this real quickly. I've been praying for you. Uh, I, I know your former pastor uh, well, Dr. Jerkins, and I've been praying for you since his, uh, his uh, departure on to another uh, ministry, so I've been praying for this branch of Zion simply because I knew him and because I knew him that connected me to you all because I was blessed to be able to watch some of your broadcasts and some of the teachings uh, through the past uh, few years and the Lord just impressed upon my heart to pray for you as you go through this period of transition. Amen. All right. Uh, my wife and my children, they're at uh, day two of competition at the National Harbor in D.C., so we're praying for them as well. Uh, 
and they send their love and prayers. Thank God for uh, my chairman of the deacons, uh, Deacon Hector, who came and uh, made sure I got here safely, and I'm praising God for him uh, and the conversations that we were able to have on the way over. Amen. I've got some good news for you this morning. There is a word from the Lord. Turn with me to Joshua chapter 4, and we'll pick up with verse 19. Joshua chapter 4, beginning with verse 19. This is what it says according to the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. The people came up out of the Jordan on the 10th day of the first month, and they camped in Gilgal on the east border of Jericho. Those 12 stones which they had taken out of the Jordan, Joshua set up in Gilgal, saying this to the Israelites, when your children ask their parents in time to come, what do these stones mean? Then you shall let your children know Israel crossed over the Jordan here on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan for you until you crossed over, as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up for us until we crossed over, so that all the peoples of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty, and so that you may fear the Lord your God forever. Do me a quick favor. Look at your neighbor. Smile at him. Tell the, your neighbor, neighbor, I don't know about you, but I need a word from the Lord. Amen. I want to teach and preach for a few moments as the Lord shall guide. Confessions of memorial stones. Confessions of memorial stones. He and she that hath ears to hear, let them hear what the Spirit saith to the church. My dear brothers and sisters, uh, there was a film that opened uh, several years ago entitled The Birth of a Nation that chronicled the life of Nat Turner and the, revo the uh, revolt that he led in Southampton County, Virginia. The movie opens with a dream sequence of a young Nat Turner being taken into the woods to meet uh, with a tribe of natives. The tribal leader notes that children that were marked at birth, uh, Nat had three vertical marks going down his chest, which were indicative of the fact that he was chosen to do something great and important. I want to park here for a moment and help all of us understand that God lets all of us know that no matter where we are in life, we have been chosen for something great. Where we are right now in our life is not the best that God has in store for us. We may be excited about where we are. We may be in retirement. We may be on our way to retirement. We may have some things that we've gotten in the bank or things in our homes. But God says, there is still more that I have in store for you. God wants all of us to understand that there are some things that God has laid out for all of us. And because God has laid them out for us, God wants us to be able to re be the recipients of what he has for us. And God has marked each and every one of us. We may not have vertical markings going down our chest, but God has placed his hand on us. And God wants us to be reminded of the fact that we ought to have some memories of what he's done in the past. And those memories will enable us to understand that we will make it through the present. And those memories will help to launch us into the future. Every now and then, God wants us to be mindful of the fact that he has some things in store for us. And we've got to do our very best to live up to what God has in store for us. 
God wants us to understand that there are some memorial stones that we will encounter in our lives. Have you ever had some things that you can just think back over your life and think how good God has been to you? Have you ever been on a bed of affliction and the Lord healed you? Have you ever dealt with a loved one that was on their bed of the of affliction and knocking on death's door and you prayed and God decided to extend their life a little bit longer or even if they did transition God came in and gave you the peace that passes all understanding letting you know that your loved one is safe in his hands God wants to remind us that we ought to think of not just the good things, but even when the bad things rise up in our minds, God wants to remind us that those memories will enable us to be mindful of the fact that God is still good and God is not through with us yet. Is there any help in the sanctuary this morning? God wants us to understand that there are some memories, some things we've been through, some trauma we've endured, some things that he allowed us to overcome, some things that he allowed us to go through simply because they were not designed to hold us hostage for the remainder of our lives, but he took us through those things so that we could come out on the other side and help somebody understand that God has the power to heal, to deliver, and to set us free. We got to understand that God is not through with us at this moment in time. God is not through with you, resurrection. God says God still has some great days ahead. The worst is behind and the best is still yet to come because God wants you to understand that he's kept you this long and he did not keep you to leave you now. God didn't keep you to leave you now. God didn't keep you to drop you now. God did not come and keep you for as long as God has kept you to drop you and you crack and shatter like an egg and everything goes all over the place. But God says, I'm holding you in my hands and I've got some memorial stones to let you know that everything will work out. Let's go and look, Jay walk through the first four chapters of uh, Joshua. Joshua chapter one opens with the death of Moses and the transition from the death of the leader, the liberator and the law, legendary lawgiver and it's transitioned into the hands of Joshua and Joshua continues to go forward and do what God called him to do. Chapter 2, we find that Joshua had sent out the spies to go and to spy out the land and they came into the, into the land of Jericho and those spies that were in the land of Jericho were hidden by Rahab so that those people would not be able to say that they were there and kill and destroy them. They were hidden by Rahab who was in the line and lineage of Jesus. They were hidden by Rahab. They deemed her as a harlot. They were hidden by Rahab so that they would be protected but she also wanted her family and her people to be protected as well and gave them a scar and a scarlet cord was given to indicate that when you come back this place is going to be protected because I helped you. Chapter 3, we find more miracles that unfold. And then by the time we open up in chapter 4, chapter 4, they go back to the Jordan. And God says, take some stones out of the Jordan River. Take 12 stones out of the Jordan and set them up as a memorial. God said, take 12 stones out of the Jordan because it's at this very spot that I am drying up the Jordan so you can turn, can go and cross over on dry land and take up 12 stones. One for each of the 12 tribes. One that was there to remind them that these 12 tribes came through and crossed on dry land. Has God ever allowed you to cross on dry land? Has God ever held back the water so that you could go through? Has God ever held back the sea and the floods so that you could walk through on dry land? Do you have some memories of what God has done in your life? Hey, do you have some memories of how God blessed your parents and your grandparents and yourself and even your children? Do you have some memories of what God is doing? Do you have some memories of how God 
is helping us to go from where we are to where God wants us to be. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm glad that I've got some memories. And my stones, they talk to me. My stones. You know, my, my, my stones. I don't have one in my pocket, but I ran. And when I came, I saw some stones outside. And I began talking to the stones. And the stones, the stones said, not only do I not want people to hold their peace so I can cry out for them, but rather, I want to tell you what I've done as God has moved me. These stones, these stones, they, they began talking to me. So the stone said, I've got a story to tell. And as I tell my story, I'm going to help you preach this message. Stones rose up and said, uh, the first confession of a memorial stone is that when I understand what's going on, the stone says, we were picked on purpose. Verse 20 of the text says, these 12 stones which they had taken out of the Jordan, Joshua set up in Gilgal. The stone said, I was picked on purpose. I was picked as a representative of the 12 tribes of Israel. I was picked on purpose because Joshua came and picked me up out of the dry ground that the Lord had dried up. It was more than 12 stones there. But the stone said, I was one of the ones that was picked on purpose. And the stone said, you were picked on purpose also. You were picked on purpose because the Lord has work for you to do. You were picked on purpose because the Lord has something that he wants to bring and it can only come through you. The Lord says you were picked on purpose not to go and destroy things, but God said I picked you on purpose so that you can help build and rebuild all that I'm putting in the earth realm. The stone said I wasn't just occupying space, but the man of God came and picked me on purpose. These stones, they were picked on purpose. And they were picked to set up a memorial or an altar. They were picked to set up something that was needed for the memory of the people. And every now and then, understand, you've been picked on purpose. Well, preacher, how are you going to say I've been picked on purpose? Have you ever been in a relationship? You either picked the person on purpose or they picked you on purpose or you picked each other on purpose. And sometimes, even though relationships don't always end the way we want them to, we were still picked on purpose. Have you ever chosen to be a blessing to someone because God decided to let you know, bless this person, bless this person, help them out, pray for them. God picked you on purpose. Because God picked you on purpose, God wants you to understand we've got to make some decisions and pick some others on purpose. We are not just occupying space in this realm by chance. We are here because of a purpose that God has for all of us. God picked you to be in resurrection on this day, at this time, at this moment in history on purpose. God says, bind yourselves together and become the united mass that God is calling you to become. Stone said, I was picked on purpose. I was picked because I could be joined tightly together with the other 11 stones. God says, uh, the stone said, I was picked on purpose because the leader saw something in me that enabled the leader to choose me. God says, you've all been chosen because you've been chosen. God wants you to understand that he chose you 
not by chance, but he chose you on purpose. Because he chose us, he wants us to be intentional about the choices that we make. Stone said, I was picked on purpose. The stone then began to talk to me again and said, I was produced to be in this path. The Bible says in verses 22 and 23, then you shall let your children know. Israel crossed over the Jordan here on dry ground. Not over there, but here on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan for you until you crossed over as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea which he dried up for us until we crossed over. Stone said we were produced to be in this path. God wants you to know, God wants you to understand that you, each and every one of us, we were produced for this very moment. We were produced to be in the path that we are in because God understood that the gifts that he put in us were necessary to be uh, exposed and to be used and developed in such a time as this. The stone says, I was created uniquely and divinely for this moment in history. Let me say that one more time. We were uniquely created and designed for this moment in history. The Bible says, then you shall let your children know. Because children, they, they love raising questions. They love asking questions. Uh, what do these stones mean? Matter of fact, uh, children, they're going to raise all kinds of questions. Why y'all put the Bible on the, on the table in, in church? Children going to raise one. Why y'all have candles up there? Ain't nobody, nobody lit them. Why are they up there? They're going to raise the question. Why, why is that cloth on the table? What, what does the inscription on the front mean? Children will raise all kinds of questions. And it's our job not to shut them down but to give them the best of our experience and our understanding. And if we don't know why they're there, be honest enough to say, I don't know, but I will try and find out. When they raise questions, they want to know, and as text says here, children are going to ask, why, or what do these stones mean? Joshua said, let them know Israel crossed over the Jordan here on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan until you crossed over as he did it for our ancestors as we crossed over the Red Sea. God is consistent. Ty Trippet put it this way. If God did it before, God can do it again. If God dried up the Red Sea in the past, when we get to our own uh, situations where we need God to dry up some water so that we can cross over on dry ground, God will do it again. If we need, if we know that God has been a bridge to carry us from where we were in the 50s and 60s into the 70s, 80s, and 90s, if God did it before, God can carry us from the 2000s to 2010, the 20s, and off into the 30s and 40s and 50s. If God did it before, God can do it again. And we've got to be open enough to watching God move as God moves, and if God moves differently now than he did before, that's a blessing in and of itself. The Bible did not say right here that God opened up the Red Sea again, but no, they were not at the Red Sea at this point. God opened up the Red Sea in the past, and he allowed them to cross over on dry ground. Now that they're at the Jordan, which was a totally different body of water, God dried up the Jordan and enabled them to cross over right here on dry ground. God will enable us to be in this path and help somebody deal with addiction and help someone deal with depression and help someone deal with being, dis uh, with being torn apart in their family and will help somebody deal with all types of situations and systems that they have to go through in life. If God did it before, he will do it again. 
you were uniquely created to handle the issues of the generations that are here right now. We've got to be open to throwing our hands up to God and say, God, stretch my understanding, open my mind, my heart, and my spirit so I can hear from you on how to help someone in this situation. We were produced to be in this path. This is a beautiful edifice, beautiful sanctuary. Beautiful landscape all around. You were produced to be here to impact this part of the city and the entire area in ways that will bring it back from the dead. It's in your name. Resurrection. That means God specializes in using you to bring stuff back from the dead. Community that might look dead. It's your responsibility to be open to God, to be raising it from the dead. Uh, financial situations that people have been dealing with and calamities. It seems as if they lost all types of money and resources and assets in the market. But God says the expertise is right here in this place to help resurrect it from the dead. We were produced to be in this pain. So the stone said, Pastor, we were picked on purpose. Pastor, we were produced to be in this path. But then the stone said one last thing. The stone said to me that the power of the Lord will prevail. Verse 24 of the text says, so that all the peoples of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty. And so that you may fear the Lord your God forever. The stone said, the power of the Lord will prevail. That Hebrew word for hand in this text is the word yad, which means power. Hebrew word for mighty in this verse means prevails. So the hand of the Lord or the power of the Lord will prevail. I don't know about you, but there have been times in my life I've been guilty of doubting God, doubting God's movement, doubting that God would ever uh, do what he knew, what he had already promised he would do. Yeah, I'm testifying myself. There have been times in my life my back was so far up against the wall, not that I did not know God. It was not that I did not trust God, but it seemed as if I was so far against the wall at those particular moments in my life that I had no concept of what God was really capable of doing. My father had passed away uh, 12 or 13 months after my mentor and my best friend passed away and I felt as if everything in my life was going down the drain and I felt like nothing positive was going to come about was going to come about of my life and I felt like nobody understood better still nobody even cared the depression that I had sunken into and the problems and the pain that I was experiencing but God said don't worry about it God came in like a flood and reminded me that my hand and my power will prevail. The Lord came in, put his hand of protection on me. The Lord came in and put his hand of power on me. The Lord came in and put his hand of purpose on me. The Lord came in and put his hand on me and enabled me to prevail. I kept on praying because the hand of the Lord 
was upon me. I kept on working because the hand of the Lord was upon me. I kept on doing what God called me to do because his hand was upon me. I kept on doing what God said do because his hand was upon me. And if his hand was upon me, his hand is still upon you. This is not the end resurrection. This is just a bend in the road from the place to your, po to your purpose and your destiny. This is an obstacle, not an obstacle, but it's a bump in the road that the Lord said, once you cross over the bump, I will enable everything to come to pass. Is there anybody in the house today who believes that the hand of the Lord is upon you? Is there anyone in the house today who can say with me, the power of God will prevail? Is there anybody who's experienced his power? Is there anybody who's experienced his love? Has you experienced his joy? Have have you experienced his love? Have you experienced his purpose? Have you experienced his hand upon you? Is there anybody in the house who knows that the Lord will heal your body, that he will heal your mind, that he will heal your heart, that he will bring you back together again? Is there anybody in the house this morning who wants to give God glory because God will pick us up turn us around place our feet on solid ground is there anyone in resurrection today is there anyone watching online today who knows that the stones were not just talking to me but they were talking to you too and the stone says the stone that the builder rejected has become the chief cornerstone the stone said in the midst of everything I am here to help you build and as we build together we'll be able to cross over into the purpose into the destiny that God has for us can you tell the stone thank you thank you stone for helping me thank you stone for being believing in me thank you stone for doing what you do and the stone said that the Lord will pick us up, strengthen us, and help us to build and to rebuild. And we shall rebuild and it will be better than it was before. The former, the latter shall be greater than the former. What is coming is greater than what has been because God specializes in using the stones not to destroy us, not to keep us out, not to block us, but to help us build. Standing to our feet all over the sanctuary. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come thanking you for letting these stones talk to us. These stones remind us that everything will work out. The stones remind us of your amazing and awesome ability to pick us on purpose. When we feel like no one around cares for us, you pick us on purpose. So God, thank you for picking us on purpose. Thank you for reminding us that no matter what, everything will work out. Thank you for reminding us that after you pick us on purpose, your power will prevail. We've been through some difficult days. We have some difficult days ahead of us. But God, thank you for reminding us that ultimately your power, not our power, but your power will prevail. So God, we, we need you. We need you. We need you. Move and minister in the lives of your people. Minister to those who are in the sanctuary, those who are online. If someone does not know you, in the free pardon of sin, help them to get to know you. There's someone who just you know, tuned in because somebody said, well, you need to go and look and see what's going on. 
God, we pray that you would help us to be intentional about sharing the good news of Jesus Christ with others. God, we pray that as you open up the doors of this bridge of Zion, that you would move and expand your kingdom here on earth. We pray that you would save someone today, Lord. Heal someone. Deliver someone. Encourage the body of Christ. Help us to understand that you don't want us to be blocked out, but you specialize in opening the door. Is there one man, woman, boy, or girl who wants to come? Is there someone who's watching online who wants to get to know Jesus? Drop a note in the chat and someone will respond to you. Help to facilitate the meeting of your needs. Come on to Christ. We offer... and every one for a purpose. Amen. Amen. And individually and collectively, we are here for a purpose. Thank you, Reverend Dr. Wainwright, for the word. Thank you for the message that we have received today of encouragement. Not to give up, not to quit, but to keep on keeping on. Amen. Amen. One more time, give God a round of applause, but also thank Reverend Rainwright for being used by God this morning in such a mighty way. Amen. We're going to ask our ushers if you will come now and receive our morning offering. We're going to sing a song as we've been doing here recently and singing, This is the day that the Lord has made because he has blessed us in a mighty, mighty way. Let us give and share what God has blessed you with. Come on, y'all, let's sing it. This is a day, this is a day that the Lord has made, the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad. Church, dear Heavenly Father, and we thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for the members, dear Heavenly Father, and we thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for each and every one that gave this morning, dear Heavenly Father, and we thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for the ones who wanted to, but had not to give. 
So we just pray the Heavenly Father that this offering that was lifted this morning, it will be used to glorify you, build up your kingdom on earth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Bear with us for a few more moments. Sister Marilyn, if you will provide our announcements for the morning, and then I'm going to ask Reverend Wayne Wright to come back and offer us the benediction. Amen? Amen. So good morning, Resurrection. So Reverend Maxwell, this morning you gave one of my announcements already, but anything worth saying is worth repeating. I just want to give a shout out to the women of RBC, the women's ministry, just in, in, under the leadership of, of Reverend Saunders for the pick and pack yesterday. The event was very well organized. As you can tell by what's remaining, it was just very well organized. And I understand it was very well received by the community. So thank you all who took the time to make your contributions and to come out and help yesterday with everything about yesterday. So amen. And, and I have a challenge for you, Reverend Saunders. Perhaps that could be our first pick and pack perhaps the lord will put it on your hearts to have another pick and pack in a couple of months or so let's do it again anything worth doing is worth doing again amen all right just a reminder uh that resurrection if you're not a regular member of our wednesday night bible studies you're truly missing out but you don't have to miss out Tune in this coming Wednesday, April 17th at 7, p at 7 p.m. Reverend Katrina will lead us in her study and discussion taken right from the Word of God. Why don't you tune in? So let's talk about what's upcoming at the Resurrection Baptist Church. All are encouraged to come out for an important conversation on understanding Social Security and how it might change in the future that will be held here at the church on Saturday, April 20th from 1 to 3 p.m. This program will feature guest speaker, Mr. Glenn Jackson, a fully licensed financial advisor with the investment company and award-winning broker-dealer with over 20 years of experience. Come out and learn about impending changes with Social Security and how it might impact your future. In addition, this event will have a second segment focused on the importance of our voting and civic engagement during the upcoming primary election next month and the presidential election in November. A recorded interview featuring Montgomery County Council Member at Large, Lori Ann Sales, hosted by our own sister Alexis Brown, will be presented. You won't want to miss the event. Invite your family friends, neighbors, and even the young adults and teens so they, w so they should know about what's going on as well. All are welcome. Members of the Missionary Ministry, your next meeting will be tomorrow at 7 p.m. on Zoom. The next grab-and-go food distribution will also be held this week on Wednesday, April 17th from 12 to 3 p.m. Please spread the word to those in the community to come on out and get some bread of some food from the Resurrection Baptist Church and then invite them back to church the following Sunday. Amen? As always, please be in prayer for those on our prayer list. Reverend Joseph E. Lewis, Sr. Reverend Doris Poole, Minister Rhonda Benavidez. I spoke with her, I texted with her this morning. Uh, she stands in need of prayer now. Sister Maddie Harris, Sister Edna Hill, Peggy Daniels, Deacon Dolores Thomas, Sister Cheryl Love, Sister Yolanda Mike, all RBC members who have lost loved ones, all RBC members who are recovering from illnesses, and please pray for the Pastoral Search Committee. To have your meeting, activity, or announcement, or prayer concerns shared with the congregation, please email me, the church secretary, at rbcchurchsecretary900 at gmail.com. That concludes our announcements for this morning. Amen.
God be the glory for the great things that God has done, is doing, and continues to do in all of our lives. Uh, thank God for this choir, music ministry. Amen. For the ushers who stand, to all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ and in creation, I thank God to Sister Alexis for its, uh, being the conduit to extend the invitation to be here with you on this day. And uh, I've got my, my chair of the deacons, and I'm going to do a shameless plug real quick. I want to cordially invite each and every one of you to come uh, to the First Baptist Church of Annapolis on Sunday, April the 28th at 3 p.m., as that will be our formal installation service. So I want to invite each and every one of you uh, to come and share with us on that great day as well. Uh, to God be the glory. Uh, let me do this prior to closing. Let me have a brief word of prayer for all of those who are on uh, sick and shut in list, and then we'll be prepared for the benediction. Gracious and ever lasting God our Father. We come praying for each and every name that was listed on the sick and shut-in list. We pray for every minister, for each of their families. We pray for every uh, officer of this branch of Zion. We pray for the pastoral search committee here at Resurrection. We pray for whoever you have anointed to come and to fill this place and to do your work. God, we pray for resurrection, that you will not only give resurrection, resurrection power, but give each member and those who are associated and affiliated with resurrection the ability to get up out of any situation they may find themselves in. God, we pray that you would anoint all of us afresh, those who are in the sanctuary, those who are watching online, those who will watch online. Bless guide, keep, heal, deliver, encourage, empower, and keep this branch of Zion not just moving, but keep them together as you continue to have them move as one collective mass of believers. God, we pray that you would move in every one of their lives. Let us all stand together. Now, may the Lord bless you. 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 The Lord lift up his face upon you in your going out and in your coming in. The Lord smile upon you in your labor and in your leisure. Now unto him who is absolutely able to allow us to have a conversation with some memorial stones on him who picked us on purpose and reminds us that his power will prevail. Be glory, majesty, dominion, and power now, henceforth, and forever. Let all the people say amen.